The Rushton manager, Brian Talbot, knows all about winning in the Cup and now so do his players. The Northamptonshire side may be third in the conference, but they'd never reached round two of the Cup. They did so in bizarre circumstances. Paul Underwood's cross hit the post, hit goalkeeper Paul Edwards and then hit the back of the net. So Shrewsbury's dismal cup record continues. Rushton's tie with Doncaster in round two guarantees a non-league presence in round three. Doncaster Rovers were relegated from the Football League last season and now at the bottom of the conference. South End a 16th in the third division. Doncaster, however, became the first non-league side to win in the FA Cup at Roots Hall thanks to David Penny. It's the first time Doncaster have reached the second round since 1989. The Cup generally brings the best out of Hensford. The conference side love nothing better than a good cup tie and they got one when Barnett went in front on 47 minutes. Darren Curry's long-range effort proving too hot to handle. But Hensford equalised in the 71st minute when a spot of football ping-pong gave Neil Davis the chance to pounce from close range. Eight minutes later, those perennial giant killers were at it again. Davis this time the provider and Jed Kimmins the grateful recipient. Barnet heads were already resting firmly on chests when the conference side rubbed salt into the wound in injury time. Paul Carty indulging a little fancy stuff to make it 3-1. There was barely time to restart the match before the referee put the third division side out of their misery. Hensford are in the second round for the third year in a row. And remember two years ago when they gave Middlesbrough an almighty scare in the fourth round. Cardiff, you have been warned. Tamworth of the Dr. Martins League and managed by Lee Hendry's father Paul against Exeter, 13th in the third division. The non-leaguers fell behind to a John Gittens header after a quarter of an hour. But they equalised just before the half hour when Darren Shaw made it 1-1. Tamworth, famous for the two pigs who escaped and went on the run earlier this year, then created another Tamworth 2. When Gary Smith shot home from close range in the second half, it instigated a quick game of dugout leapfrog. Watch this. They held on until five minutes into stoppage time when it became the Tamworth 2, Exeter 2. Jonathan Richardson, the goal scorer. Another lucky escape in Tamworth. Slough took the initiative in this tie in the 24th minute. Sports psychology student Richard Pearson was the scorer, highlighting the benefit of positive thinking. Slough player manager Graham Roberts was an FA Cup winner with Spurs and he watched with pride as his Ryman Premier League side went 2-0 up, Andrew Dina the scorer. But that was the cue for one of those rip-roaring FA Cup fightbacks, former Manchester United striker Graham Tomlinson giving the second division side a glimmer of hope. Macclesfield manager Sammy McElroy has also lifted the cup and the second division side lifted his spirits with an equaliser three minutes from time. Effie Soldier, the toast of this corner of Cheshire. At the final whistle, things got a little overexcited. McElroy getting involved with the Slough contingent. It should certainly spice up the replay. Second Division York hadn't won for five games, but they must have fancied their chances at Ryman Premier League Enfield. By half-time, they were 2-0 up and cruising. Both goals from Richard Cresswell. The first from a corner. It was his tenth goal of the season. Twenty minutes later, he had number 11 when he poked the ball home from a virtually identical spot. But in the second half, one five-minute spell turned the game around. A long punt from goalkeeper Andy Pape was flicked on to Dunwell, who did well and lobbed well. Soon afterwards, Enfield drew level, when a bit of a body ping-pong allowed striker John Richardson to lob Andy Warrington again. Three minutes from the end, Dunwell had what he thought was the winner, but it was disallowed and it finished level.
The Kidderminster manager Graham Allnut was in the Worcester City side that knocked Plymouth out of the cup 20 years ago and he almost did it again at home park. Kidderminster's best chance fell to Craig Hinton, but this time the post came to Plymouth's rescue. If ever an upset was on the cards, this was it. Second Division Northampton were down to ten men after just two minutes when their striker, David Seal, was sent off after a tussle on the goal line. The referee took a very dim view of it all. Lancaster's power play advantage came to the fore when Peter Thompson volleyed in Stuart Gelling's corner. But after the break, Northampton denied Lancaster their first bit of FA Cup glory for 25 years when Thompson headed into his own goal to make it 1-1. And Northampton progressed to the second round just a minute later when Ian Sampson headed home from a corner. No upset here then. Second Division Bournemouth avoided a banana skin at Basingstoke, but only just. They went in front in the 37th minute, John O'Neill keeping his head while those around him were panicking. The Ryman's League side gave the visitors a second half. Shit. Nigel Clough's Burton Albion travelled to Surrey only to be disappointed by an 18-year-old with his sights on the Premiership. Kingstonian's 18-year-old star Gavin Holligan scored his 11th goal of the season. It came 20 minutes from time to leave the Clough family with yet more FA Cup disappointment. Before the war, Dulwich were the kings of amateur football. Their FA Cup record isn't quite as impressive. They haven't reached round two for 50 years. And they'll have to wait even longer. To make things worse, they went out to an own goal. Tony Houghton won't be watching that on video too often. But Southport's victory has at least given football on Merseyside something to shout about. West Auckland from the Northern League had the longest journey of all in the first round of the FA Cup sponsored by AXA. They're 50 places below Yeovil in the pyramid, but they took a ninth-minute lead through Jonathan Milroy. Before half-time, the 1911 World Cup winners from the North East went 2-0 up with a header from Paul Adamson. But just one minute later, Yeovil began a fight back. The conference side made it 2-1 when Warren Patmore scored with a glancing header. West Auckland held the lead until injury time, but they couldn't stop Yeovil's substitute Ben Smith forcing a replay. Adjusted formula 